you've reached the Signal Watch. Movies, television, comics, and more. I'm your host, Ryan Steens. Join me and our cadre of co-contributors as we examine cultural artifacts of the 20th century, boldly explore the 21st, and try to put it all in perspective. Stay tuned. We're going to try to make this work. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Signal Watch. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Steens, and with me today is... Hello, Simon Day here. And uh, before we get started, I wanted to give a shout-out to Stuart, who we've mentioned several times on the podcast before, but I'm going to mention him especially today for a couple of reasons. One, he's actually met Simon. That's true. And they they got (laughs) along famously. Um, What What did we go and see together? Hellboy. That's it. That, that, yeah, that was not a good, good choice, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Stuart, Stuart's a patron, and he also... He likes uh, Neil Marshall. He likes Neil Marshall, <laughs> but he also has also seen several alligator movies. And we're here today talking about alligator and crocodile movies. And didn't he recommend the second one? He definitely did, yeah. Which um, which actually, I'd, I'd, I'd totally stand with him. I would have probably recommended this. I guess we can start off by... So we did Crawl. We watched Crawl, which is in theaters. Okay, I'm going to stop for you right now. Oh, all right. Because everyone's going to think you said Crawl. Crawl. As in <laughs> I the wish, 1980s I, fantasy I movie. wish Crawl was in the theaters. <laughs> yeah, I'd go and watch that. <laughs> he's saying Crawl, if crawl, you're an American. Crawl. I'm a bit congested as well, actually. Yeah, um, he's having some allergies. But Crawl, uh, I've got a good, a good question for you uh-huh. um, for three points. Is cruel because is it called cruel because it's a cruel, they're in the cruel space of the house? Is it because the alligator crawls around a lot, or they crawl around, or a swimming move is a crawl that she does? You know, it's funny you should bring up the last one <laughs> because <laughs> I had the same thought. They could call it doggy pedal, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, is she doing the crawl when she was swimming Ooh. out of the tunnel? She's crawling and cruel. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I got excited when I saw the trailer for this. Because this yeah. is the kind of summer movie my brother and I, when I was in college and out of, would, like, as soon as we saw the trailer, we're like, we're seeing that. Well, you were well, last year. We did The Meg. Right. Which um, I think has been our only disagreement, major disagreement. <laughs> Although we were talking about doing the Last Jedi movie, so there you go. Yeah. But, yeah, I wasn't very happy with that. But you, you quite liked that, didn't you, last year? When I, I like movies with animals eating people mm. full stop. There wasn't enough of that in the make though. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I also knew what it was going in because it was like PG-13. But this yeah. one, the Crawl was R. And yeah. um, when I saw the trailer for it, initially, in the, for the first like 30 seconds of the trailer, I thought it was going to be an alien invasion movie. Mm. And I was like, I'm not seeing this stupid thing. And the second I saw an alligator, I was like, I am in. Yeah. I'm absolutely going to see yeah. whatever they're serving up here. Because I want to see alligators eating people. Well, I think I sent you the trailer. Because it was like... Um, and you know, the trailer's not the best. It does look a bit like a TV movie. But you know, but it's basically like, yeah. Um, there's like a hurricane. Um, alligators are in the area anyway. There's signs up all over saying you know be careful they kind of hunt you and you know they'll kind of follow you home and of course this whole area this suburb becomes underwater well that's not why they're telling people not to be there (laughs) have you ever been through a hurricane (laughs) well I guess not (laughs) well I mean that's true well she she does a very stupid thing really she kind of ignores the police in the movie and this is definitely a movie where people do dumb things to make the movie happen yeah yeah like the dad going down to the... We're kind of spoiling this. Right. Part. No, that's fine. We're going to spoil yeah. the hell out of Crawl. But, uh, I mean, the dad goes down to the cellar in the first place during a hurricane, which probably isn't the best idea. I, I mean, so... But he was well out ahead of the hurricane. He, he was... he was. I suppose it's a dad thing to do as well. Yeah. You got to batten down... When you have a hurricane coming, if, if you're... if you're, Is he battening down? I thought he was, like, fixing the lights or doing something stupid. You, you have to basically just make sure everything's secure when a yeah. hurricane's coming. Now... 
That he, said, this house is... He's already really doing that. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a two-story <laughs> pier and beam house yeah. that is sitting like directly on the edge of, of what appears to be where a tidal flow comes in, which means... Massive pipe linked to the house. Yeah. To a lake full of alligators, apparently. Yes. <laughs> that had a grate, but at some point exploded. This grate see, has exploded. See, if I lived in that house, even if I had a grate, I wouldn't be very relaxed if I knew that was linked to a lake full of alligators. Yeah. I'd be like, can you block up that pipe somehow and give me some proper drainage or plumbing? Right. So the story is that our star is a young woman who's the actor and character's name I don't recall. Do you do you know either? I, I, I've got it written down. I'm going to attempt this. Um, Kaya uh, Skodikrio? Skodikrio? She was in a... Uh, she was in Skins. The TV show Skins. She's also English. Oh. Which I didn't know. Oh. Um, she has an American, a very good American accent. And I've been like, you know, we were talking about in the Fly podcast. This is pretty much almost a play because it's just her and Barry Pepper. If you want to season your film, add some pepper. Um, <laughs> and it's just the two of them, really. Right. And, and the dog. Yeah. So she's, well, she's, she's a, a swimmer at the University of Florida. Uh, yeah. My parents' alma mater. So go Gators. And... She a hurricane is coming, and her sister's like, "How's Dad?" And go go check on Dad because Dad's been in a bad way since the divorce. Yeah. And so, despite the fact she doesn't seem to get along with her dad, and she is driving directly into the path of a hurricane, yeah, which is something that I'm not going to say people don't do it because people do all kinds of dumb things in hurricanes. She kind of does not follow what would be the advice she is driving towards which honestly the cops probably would stop her i think yeah i think they'd probably chase her even yeah you know so um so anyway she she goes to go find her dad and he's in their the house that they all grew up in but he is in the basement yeah he's he's left his own dingy little divorcee apartment and he's he's gone back to the house to kind of do some repairs in a very dad sense in the middle of a hurricane and um and yeah, she turns up and finds him injured. And then, of course, we reveal the fact that he's injured because there's a fairly big alligator. Now, the, these two films are different because yeah. the alligators in uh, Crawl are kind of normal size, you know? They're not that big, but they're still right. big enough to do damage to you. There's just uh, Pretty of- much any alligator is big enough <laughs> to do damage to you. <laughs> Bigger than, bigger than a couple of yeah, inches. Yeah. But, I mean, there's, there's there's a lot of them. I guess that's the selling point. Were, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, when you find out there's two that, you know, so they they get trapped. The alligator appears by exploding through the stairwell that they, she took the rickety wooden stairwell into the yeah. storm or down to the, the crawl space. Yeah. Um, and the first half of the yeah. film is pretty much in the crawl space, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's odd. Um, yeah. And I, I wondered about that as far as, like, well, actually, like... Is it based on something that actually happened? You know, because sometimes mm-hmm. that's what happens with these movies. And as illogical as it would seem, it, Florida's a magical place. Yeah. Uh, where you read stories of, like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened, like, all the time, <laughs> right? And, I mean, there was a story not that long ago in the news about a woman who heard some noise in her kitchen, and she went into her kitchen, and there was a seven-foot alligator... Shit. In her kitchen, yeah, in in Florida, that was like maybe like four months ago or something. Whoa! And I don't know if it had come in through a window, if it had pushed in through the doggy door. Like I never heard what it was. I just saw the pictures of this lady it had taken like of her tile floor and this alligator kind of like hello, you That's know, crazy. sitting crazy. It's crazy. Well, mate, did she have like a big overflow pipe stuck <laughs> on the side of her kitchen? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> But they do kind of, they do actually kind of get into places they're not supposed to be, and so there's yeah. you know services for alligator golf, removal all over. Golf the place. course. Go- oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. We've been watching that on YouTube. That yeah. massive alligator walking across the well, golf course. We'll link to some of those. <laughs> um, I spent like twenty minutes, thirty minutes after we watched this movie, just watching video of alligators in places they weren't supposed to be. I mean, I I really enjoyed Cool. And it's it's doing very well at the box office. It was made for thirteen point five million. I think it's almost up forty million just domestic. And you know, I love the director who um, Alexandra, I think Aja, Aja, uh-huh. you, you pronounce. I think I'm not sure. Um, but he did High Tension um, or Hot Tension or Switchblade Romance, as it was known in the UK. Actually, had three titles. Um, and the remake of The Hills Have Eyes, which I think was actually better than Wes Craven's version. And then he did a ghost story, Mirrors, with Kiefer Sutherland. And then 
Piranha 3D. And all of those were incredibly bloody and a little bit silly. And, you know, geysers of blood and body limbs flying everywhere. I felt, I felt this was actually quite subdued. He was almost trying to make this as realistic as possible. Yeah, I kind of wondered if they hadn't pushed for him to almost make it PG-13. Mm, yeah. um, I don't think it was... No, Barry Pepper was getting low on body parts towards the end. Right, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, and you did see like broken bones and things like sticking out of people's skin and and whatnot. It um, could have been a PG though, because there wasn't really. Yeah, I think you're right. There wasn't really any swearing much in it or anything else. Really, no, so, you know, no. Um, obviously, it, no, no news to see. Obviously, or for the alligators. <laughs> <laughs> With um, the alligator shoes, <laughs> crocodile shoes. Um, but yeah, it's it, it is this kind of intimate movie that that sets itself up with this story of like it's a daughter the, father redemption tale right if i if i had to trick a girl into going to see this that's what i would call it <laughs> right and and, and that's in and, and it's insanely heavy-handed the way they they deliver it to me i like i why well, liked barry pepper's little little kind of like monologue when he was explaining this isn't it wasn't your fault that we got divorced. We were just unhappy. And, and like you said, it was very boilerplate. Uh-huh. But I thought it just... It went well, you know. And I, and I kind of warmed to her character, who was kind of a little bit bitchy at the start. And, you know, with her sister and with the dad. Yeah. And she kind of warmed up and realised... Well, into the cop, into anybody who was yeah. in her path. Yeah. Well, she that's was, true. Yeah, she was a yeah. bit... Yeah, she kind of uh, bulldozed people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had this moment, I'll be totally honest, when he was doing the monologue of, like... This is Barry Pepper, who in circa 1993 looked like he was about to have a giant career. Like they were trying to set him up for that at that point. Mm. And then he did Battlefield Earth. And yeah. after that, it was just kind of like all downhill for poor Barry Pepper. And I, I got this feeling. So a long time ago, there was the show on cable to tie it all into alligators. Yeah. Where they would trick. They, they canceled it basically because I think they felt so bad about what they were doing. But it was a reality show. And what they would do is they would trick people into thinking they were making a movie. And they would make the stupidest possible movie. They'd come up with the dumbest script they could and put it in the <laughs> actor's hands. And then the the actors would, you know, they'd kind of interview them, like, what do you think? And the actors were invariably like, it's going great. I love it. I feel like the script's really good. Um, It's almost like candy camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And and then there'd be this big reveal at the end. We'd go, oh, we fooled you for like a week while you thought you were doing something with your life, you know, sort of thing. (laughs) And then they were always like, oh, I have to be a good sport to be on TV. Am I still getting paid? So there was this episode they did about were crocodiles, a movie where they were like, oh, they were God. telling they were doing a movie about were crocodiles, and this young woman who was in the movie, who knows she's about to turn, I think was the deal, gives this speech they'd written that was the stupidest possible speech, and they all stood around and at the end. They they cut back to the guy who was the host of the show, like you know, in the kind of like confessional thing. He's like, because. The, the, the cast and crew are like standing around just like in shock is this girl's yeah. like producing real tears and all this going through it and nails this BS yeah you know speech and they're like we don't know what to do she's that good of an actor yeah we don't know what to tell her <laughs> we're kind of embarrassed <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We, we feel horrible now for what we're doing and that was kind of the end of the show but um <laughs> the uh that's what this reminded me of the Aww. speech of like he's been in there he's no way because he's a good actor yeah and he gave this that was his little moment that that's, was his moment that's right? why he signed he off. was totally shining in this moment as as he he gave this kind of boilerplate you know whatever you've seen the speech in a million movies where it's like I'm so sorry things didn't work out between me and your mom but it's not your fault yeah. it's not your fault you're an apex predator yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that that was what I when I watched the movie I was kind of like you know I could just see all the wheels turning of yeah. how all of it was going together so I couldn't just be yeah. in the scene with it well that's that's probably I, I kind of understand I, I get where you're coming from you know my main criticism of this film is and I don't you know I don't, I'm going to try to kind of describe what I mean here but it's like it's it was slightly underwhelming yeah. and when I when I say that I don't need piranha silliness every time and I think that would have been totally out of place in this if it had gone yeah. kind of like ape shit you know but at the same time yeah it was almost like a little bit too predictable 
in oh, a while. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When the dog doesn't get eaten in the yeah. first scene of the movie, yeah. I was like, I know what movie this is. Oh, yeah. And from then on, every beat safe. that happened, safe. yeah, every, every decision was safe. Mm-hmm. You knew father and daughter were going to make it out. Yeah. You know, worse for wear, but they'd make it out, you know. Yeah. Um, well, Barry Pepper actually sacrificed his hand to save the dog in the last 10 minutes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That sugar is the world's smartest, best dog. So you've got to you've got to help her out. But yeah, no, I agree. It it and the other thing it did that that the other movie we're going to talk about here momentarily didn't do yeah. um, is it just showed the alligators like from Jump. It did, it did, and they they were very well done. We were saying the CGI was actually pretty good. I thought. Mm-hmm. And I think you agree. I agree. I did talk to Stuart, who said he thought the CGI wasn't very good. It's late of all rubbish, did he say? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I I thought it was perfectly fine. There was genuinely some scenes I wasn't sure that those weren't puppets that they were using. So I think some of the head stuff was. especially when it That's what I was thinking. Like the close-ups, you could see the light off their eyes and stuff. And also when it kind of got the, um, the looters in the bow, and you just saw the head hitting the mum. <laughs> I love that scene. That was so a great much. scene. Yeah, because that was also moralistic. Don't loot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they all kind of, you know, the whole family got taken out, kind of like pretty much at the same time in different places. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I, I, you know, I, I feel this was almost like for the director, proving he can almost do a safe film that makes money a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's the only reason he signed up for this, but it's almost like you know getting him back in the game mm-hmm. maybe so that he can make stuff he wants to in the future um, I mean and I think he probably punched that card yeah, yeah. I mean I, I, yeah. I, I apparently this is very profitable I understand yeah. horror aficionados are I'm, I'm not not part of that uh, Twitter universe but I understand they quite like it yeah now the things that I, you know we kind of made fun of you know the Barry Pepper speech or whatever you know as far <laughs> as the, like the actual alligators went I did look up because they make a lot of like Jurassic Park like suppositions about alligators. Yeah. Like, oh, they can't hear in the air. Mm. Like, so, so, yeah. They're like, you're fine walking around as long as you're like on the ground, but if you get in the water, then they can hear you. Maybe he says that. Right. But it's like, that's not true. Alligators can hear you just fine. Yeah. And they made some other comments like that, that if you went and looked them up, I was just kind of like, none of this appears to be true. I don't know why they said that for the purposes of the movie when alligators are a very well-known animal. Because they kept going, that doesn't sound right when they would say things. Well, there's also that kind of bit that, you know, it got a little bit annoying towards the end where Barry Pepper says, we got to get that bolt because the levee's going to break. And it's over the other side of the car park. And of course, it's all flooded. Yeah. And he goes, okay, let's walk real slow. And we're making these splashes, and they start doing that, and then he basically just goes, "Screw it, swim as fast as you can." <laughs> and I'm like, "That's a terrible plan." <laughs> and well, and there was a lot of stuff like that in the movie. Like yeah. one of the things you would do in a hurricane if you were in that position is what they actually do at the end of the movie. Mm. Um, get on they, the roof. Get on the roof. Yeah, yeah you yeah. get up to the second story and try and wait it out. If that's not working, then you get up to the roof. You if, bust ba- if Barry Pepper had been fixing his aerial. The whole film would have been fine. There wouldn't be any problems. <laughs> I'm up here. Look out for the alligators. I'm getting reception. Yeah. I've got reception. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it, it has some stuff like that. Like she gets rolled by alligators in the movie something like three times. I'm like... Well, there's also that silly bit where they kind of... Um, they get in the boat and of course the levee hits them and the boat gets thrown straight back into the house. Yeah. Just like... Wiping out any point for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> well, and, and another thing Stuart said, as long as we're talking so much about yeah. Stuart, is, yeah. and I agree. It kind of reminded me of Jurassic Park with the Jeep and the tree. but back in the car. But that should have <laughs> happened 30 minutes earlier in the movie. Yeah. Once she does the apex predator swim at the end, mm. that's it. Her arc is done at that point. They've reconciled with that. Yeah. They, they've, they've kind of really been they should have at that point you know she's now proven she can do it right whether she can yeah. outswim other people yeah. she's she's proven whatever she needed to prove to herself she in that in right. several other cases right I mean I guess they've just they just still it's probably like we've got 70 minutes of film <laughs> let's do a couple more endings but there, it just makes me wonder about the whole film because it, it we're gonna have the beginning of this movie take place entirely like in a crawl space 
Mm. Like that was something somebody really thought was going to make for exciting cinema, and I, I, I would argue it actually has the same problem as uh, Waterworld, right. the the Kevin Costner movie. Okay, because it basically puts you within a very limited uh, vertical space. Yeah, with what you can do with the camera, they do as much as I think they can, yeah. but it basically puts you into you know like. It, 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 I was actually making you know jokes. We talked about doing a you know it could be a play or whatever. I was just yeah. imagining the poor actors dressed as alligators, Scorsing. like I'm gonna get you, you know. <laughs> um, but you know, as far also, as maybe you could stand up on stage, right? <laughs> Let's be like going down all fours. Yeah, those poor actors, their lower backs would just be thrown out. Well, isn't it the same with both films? And we can start talking about Rogue in a minute. But mm. with both films, the problem is they have great setups. Or, or after the setups, they have a great kind of like, you know, middle two thirds kind of where they're stuck in a location. Mm-hmm. And not only is the animal a threat, but something else is a problem. There's like several conflicts going on. So, you know, so they've got the hurricane, they're stuck in the basement, there's alligators. Yeah. And then in, um, in Rogue, they're stuck on an island, yeah. you know, they've, they've crashed the boat. Nobody knows where they are. Yeah. The, the tides come in, and there's a big crocodile. Yeah. And then, at some point, they have to get out of that. And then it's almost like, but we still got ten minutes of film left. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. And actually, I'm I'm also thinking of the the, the old movie with uh, Colin Farrell, the phone, phone booth. I never saw that movie, but I know what you're talking about. I mean, you know, I think it was John Sales might have done the script, but it was like, you know, he's really good at same thing. Uh-huh. Great setup. But at some point, he's got to get out the phone booth, right? You know, to finish the film. Um, so yeah, so maybe Speed had the same thing, right? Where they yeah, have to go get really good yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely feel it. And, and part of the problem with the basement and, and crawl is they have like a spader shovel, a James and Spader shovel, the James Spader <laughs> shovel. <laughs> I'm so they have a Ke- Kevin here. Bacon rake. Yeah, <laughs> um, but. If you have a shovel or a spade, and you have, and she's in pretty good shape at the beginning of the Stamp movie. Stamp it. Yeah. Well, not just that. They have these like kind of portals that are the letting air and light in that are just like made of cinder. Did. Yeah. I could never understand why she didn't like the cinder block. You can chip away at. Yeah, yeah. You can definitely like. It, you don't need to be that strong, and and you just need to, you need to just keep kind of at it. It's meant to kind of chip yeah. away like that. And I couldn't understand, like, why she didn't do that. Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> um, the, the, there, were, there were a couple of things like that that were like, you could do this thing and be fine, or you could do that, and they just they just didn't bring it up or explain why they weren't doing it. Well, I mean, like staying in the house. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you, I guess you can get away with some of it through people just panicking, but then, yeah, I mean, when the dad was kind of. You know, the basement had filled up with water and she was trying to get back into the house to get to him. And yeah. she started, like, digging a hole in the floor. I'm like... And, he, you know, and he could have been in a different place. I think he was. But you could have said, well, why not just open that trap door that had something on it, stopping yeah. it opening before? Yeah. And just or get him to at least be in that area. Yeah. So, yeah, they kind of kept making it harder for themselves. Yeah. But I guess they were trying to build suspense. Yeah. I mean... You gotta be you gotta be smarter than the audience though when you're doing that. Yeah, and I, and I honestly think yeah. that's gonna be my my transition over to Rogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think Rogue actually, from like Jump, you said, "Oh, the pacing on this isn't what I remember it being," or something along those lines. Well, I, I so I I also watched uh, another another crocodile film called Primeval last night, also from 2007, and um, that you know I won't go into that in detail, but. It's, Set in Africa, it's based on a real story of this man eating crocodile called Gustav, who still hasn't been caught. He's still out there, and supposedly he's eaten three hundred plus people. Everybody, um, check under your beds tonight. <laughs> but he's uh, yeah, check your your outflow pipe and in your basement. But that in that the crocodile was very fast moving, is very Hollywood. I think I told you earlier. You know, some of the scenes were very I think unrealistic. This crocodile ran over dry land. The length of about three football fields to get a go. So I looked this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a crocodile runs about nine miles an hour, which means a Bullshit. person in any kind of health, <laughs> any kind of health that you're in, 
Yeah. You, you're going to, as long as, you know, and you're going to have adrenaline going. If, if you're not smashy with a walking frame, you can probably outpace a crocodile. Right, man. right. And, and you're talking to an alligator, they're going to give up and, you know, turn back to the water. Yeah. Uh, Which, alligator can run 11 miles an hour, so it's marginally faster. How much so. But, you know, the alligators and crawl are in a very tight space through most of it, but there are some mm-hmm. times where they're like, you know, get some acceleration going. I don't yeah. know how realistic any of that is. I've never dealt with alligators. No, I mean, you know, I, I, I like the fact that if you've got marshland, I can I can see it making it easier for them and them skimming a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I mean, well, getting back to Primeval, what kind of put me off it was like, it just moved way too fast. It kind of like, you know, almost like swooped in, ha-ha! And, you know, gra- grabbed somebody. <laughs> and then like, you know, kind of shot off again. Whereas in Rogue, it seemed to act like a real creature more yeah you know I mean especially towards the end where, where it was in a cave mm-hmm. and when it went into the water the trough this mm-hmm. deep trough of water you know it kind of like silently glided along but then when it came back out onto kind of like rock it kind of was dragging itself because mm-hmm. it's so heavy it's so big yeah yeah yeah, yeah. One but, of the things but, I liked about but you liked the whole pace, though, didn't you? you liked yeah, the, I had no problem. Like I love yeah. the fact that unlike you know we have the setup we have in crawl is this unpleasant person being unpleasant, yeah, and kind of storming around like looking at her dad's mail and why is he doing this to me and you know, brand, blah, blah, blah. British. yeah and um, you know in this movie yeah okay so the travel writer doesn't necessarily want to be in Australia he wants to he'd rather be eating at a four star restaurant talking about that yeah but. And he's they kind of get over he's that. He's kept in the background as well, which I kind of like. Yeah, yeah. You know, he slowly comes to the fore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you also get like the environment. Like they show yeah. real out al- real crocodiles, rather. So alligators only live in the southern United States. Crocodiles live on the rest of the planet. Yeah, yeah. They are different animals. This was a saltwater crocodile. This is a saltwater yeah. crocodile. And so when you get to the crocodile, you've had some setup of seeing other crocodiles her kind of talking about what they do and don't do We've and so when teased. it does something different mm. yeah it's like no one knows what to do now because yeah. this thing is not behaving the way we think it's going to it actually went after a boat because it's as big as the boat and it's yeah. gotten super territorial yeah and they've actually gone off, i was gonna say flight path they've gone off their flight path mm-hmm. and they're in an area because they were looking for those flares that yeah. they shouldn't be in yeah so they're not even on the boat tour route anymore yeah, I, I really liked Rogue. I mean, it's so so. It's directed by Greg McLean, who's famous for doing Wolf Creek, and I've seen Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek is a very good kind of Aussie Texas Chainsaw Massacre type serial killer movie. Um, if you're in the mood for that, it kind of came out around that time of Hostel and all the other torture things. But it's it's, it's actually a good film, very suspenseful. Um, unfortunately, Greg McLean seems to have ended up in the Wolf Creek business since then because he's done Wolf Creek two, and two seasons of a Wolf Creek TV show which I didn't even know about until I looked it up um, impressively in all of these John Jarrett who plays the serial killer uh-huh. is in all of those and he's a great actor he's actually a favourite of Quentin Tarantino's he plays one of the Aussie miners at the end of Django Unchained okay. who's like oh mate you know, what are you doing out here and, and then you know, Django falls him into the and go and killing them um, but he was Russell the bereaved guy who dropped his wife's ashes uh, in Rogue okay. and he looked absolutely totally different you know he's just like a little kind of sad widower in mm-hmm. Rogue um, instead of a scary serial killer <laughs> yeah so Rogue has this interesting setup uh, somewhat like Speed or something like that where you have a bunch yeah. of people who don't have anything in common other than they all somehow ended up on a tourist boat yeah. checking out the crocodile tour somewhere uh, in a province in, in Australia boat goes under 10 miles now yeah <laughs> it's going to blow up <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dennis Crocker is sitting back keep yeah. paddling yeah <laughs> Uh, so but yeah so you have this kind of mishmash of like American tourists I think one woman's uh, might be Irish Um, there's yeah anyway all these kinds of yeah yeah. but you know so you have all these personalities and so they're not they're not ready to start talking to each other and start necessarily working together just families and couples and Mm -hmm. but like you said they seem like really well real tourists real people absolutely yeah yeah it's not like you know Hollywood trying to do real people 
Yeah. Because, yeah, even in Crawl, you know, she was like a little bit too pretty, a little bit too gorgeous in a way. Whereas I don't I f- know. I, that, that, none of that. Or maybe it was just like a little bit too much Hollywoodish attitude. Come that's on. that's what got to me it was yeah. like this is clearly like scripted attitude like yeah she, for, for as upset as she is about everything she's still doing all the things the nice person would do yeah yeah so totally. it's like eh, anyway it, it would like i said it's crawl felt to me like they wrote scenes to to make things happen rather than them happening organically where well rogue rogue the characters like sam worthington plays the kind of kind of slightly dickish ex-boyfriend Mm-hmm. He's bothering her at the start, but he he kind of turns that around to like trying to be heroic, mm-hmm. and you know whereas um, is it Michael Vartan is the main guy he mm-hmm. um, who was in Alias I think for years with Jennifer Garner, I think that's the biggest thing he did, kind of did or the most famous thing, but he you know starts off almost like this kind of quite bookish guy who um, I mean not quite Anthony Hopkins in the Edge but you know he's just sitting back and you know just like trying to get this over with really so he can get back to the hotel yeah but then he has to kind of come forward and step up a little bit yeah. and then and towards the end he's obviously very heroic yeah he kills the beast <laughs> <laughs> the, it does the unusual thing for a movie of the nature guide doesn't somehow miraculously know their way out of everything that you know everything that could possibly happen like yeah. she genuinely doesn't know what to do like there's a little yeah. bit of a setup of like she used to hang out with Worthington. Sam Worthington's character, and now she, you know she's gotten too high and mighty, I guess, because she's doing these tourist. Boat well, he's things. just a kind of dumbass, and she yeah, just dumps him. Yeah, I think that that's <laughs> probably the case. But they don't do the thing of like you know. But she also knows how to you know fight a forty foot crocodile, you know, and all these. It's MacGyver. Yeah, <laughs> well, so they do. They do a little bit. MacGyver. There is, but it's different bit. people coming Doesn't up with though. different ideas. Yeah, that's all rubbish plans, like Jamie said. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you gotta do what you gotta do so um yeah it's 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 got some interesting stuff i like the variety of characters i like the fact that they you know they get on the boat they're doing kind of the tourist thing of kind of complaining you know their various ways about oh it's too hot the flies, flies. oh we have to save somebody because we saw flares and that's what you do on the sea right when someone's in distress yeah that's the rule of being in water you got to go help that person yeah and so and the people are like, but i've got to catch my bus you know and yeah. all this and it, which are the things people. you would hear right yeah. exactly um well you pointed out when i think the first plan goes wrong or when they're about to do it you know, one guy kind of pushes to the front and they will start panicking and it kind of falls apart. And it's like, yeah, that's very realistic. You know, they wouldn't just go, you know, like tearing Inferno or something like, I'm going to go first. Right. You know, it's like they would be pushing people out of the way and messing it up. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to say one of the, the bits of wisdom I've gotten, you know, from age and experience is... <laughs> In a crisis situation, people Fall apart. are yeah totally unpredictable. <laughs> you don't know what crazy thing they're going to suddenly decide that needs to happen in that moment. And some people get incredibly selfish. You know, I, so when I see scenes like that in movies that used to drive me crazy when I was like in my 20s, I was like, nobody would do that. They'd want to work together to yeah. solve the problem. And yeah. you're like, not at all. Oh, that no. is not no. how people are wired in the slightest. Yeah. You only have to see what happened, was it, a couple of years ago here when we had a gas shortage? Yeah. So get a gas station and see what people like. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that twice. Yeah. I saw that once in Phoenix and once here, and you're 100% correct. It, both places, people lost their minds. If you don't have gasoline, nobody knows what to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, I thought the, this, the CGI, I guess, was done by Weta to some yeah. extent. Uh, yeah. They, they use them. And it... I, for when the movie came out, I think yeah, it still holds up incredibly well. 12 years ago now? 2007? Mm-hmm. Um, there were some shots that I was like, oh, you know, that, that isn't working so well. But um, Well, like you said, they kind of... they In Rogue, they kind of did the Jaws thing, where they really save it all for the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And, um, and before that, it's, you know, you get glimpses. So you get a little bit of tail... A um, little bit of thigh, no. it's like, <laughs> but it's like. Um, but there's there's actually a great scene. I think the spookiest scene in this for me is, um, I think the second guy to die, the second dad to die. There's a bunch of dads in this who are very kind of useless as well. 
Um, they should have got Barry Pepper in this, but it's like uh, it'd have been available. But yeah, the second dad who dies kind of gets bitten and thrown into the water. I think he bites his arm off, but then he's floating out and you know turns around the crocodile and goes and just grabs him. And he's kind of like being pulled through the water and almost like slowly waving as he goes under. And it's just like very disinquieting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think they did it. Yeah. They did the Jaws thing and I think it was the smart thing. It's what I think Crawl could or should have found a way to make their crawl space darker or instead of like once they've exploded the stairwell um, from then on, it's like not really clear why they can't figure out where the alligators are all the time. Yeah, yeah, except, um, except I guess the water's getting deeper. Well, there's a while before the water really starts rising. And even then, they're like, where are the alligators? Where are the alligators? What was your... So I just mentioned my favorite scene in Rogue. What was your favorite scene in Crawl? Because I loved the... Um, although, again... It was definitely seeing the people get eaten who were stealing the ATM. But well, that well, was just that sheer was, joy of devouring alligators. That was really good. I did like, although, again, the policeman was a bit of an idiot for not working out in... A third of the time, what we all knew, yeah. where the swing is going backwards and forwards. Yeah. And he's like, what's pulling that swing over there under the water? And you just see the swing and then suddenly, you know, it's pulled down, it's coming towards him. Yeah, I thought that was very odd. That's a bit like the barrels, the ba- the yellow barrels and jaws, I guess. Yeah, I think I, I did like the scene where she was able to hold her breath for an ungodly amount of time and kind of get through the pipe. Yeah. And she... <laughs> Which the pipe, which you also realize would be way too small for those alligators as she's swimming through it. And you're like, no one paid any attention when they're making this movie. Um, but she comes out the other side and looks up. I think that pipe changes sizes a few times. Yeah. Think, I should say, yeah. <laughs> and she looks up and you can see the, the alligator great. silhouette on the Just surface. Just sitting there, yeah. facing. That was great. Yeah. That was great, actually. Um, well, I mean, so yeah. So I guess the question will have to be, would you rather be up against a bunch of alligators or one massive crocodile? One massive crocodile. I agree. Because, obviously, if you can outwit that somehow, hide right. behind a rock, you're doing all right. Whereas if there's alligators everywhere, yeah, you're pretty a bit stuck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I that, that was kind of the thing that I did... One of the things I didn't buy about Crawl was... It always seemed the alligators... I mean, I'm not expecting them to like hunt in packs. They're not like velociraptors <laughs> or something. But, um, Can they be trained? So, actually, I wrote down a note, and this was one of my complaints with. She and this Chris, is a very small thing with with Rogue. Chris Majewski. <laughs> <laughs> um, was they said they're living dinosaurs? Is that true? No. Here and here's why. Yeah. Alleg- crocodiles were, in fact, around during the dinosaur era. Mm. Crocodiles are a reptile. That yeah. is not the same thing as a dinosaur. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Dinosaurs are their own sub-animal species. Yeah, totally. And you know this, one of the ways you can know this, just so everybody out there knows. When you think about like the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, you think about like the T-Rex running. Its legs are positioned with its hips so that the legs are directly underneath them, mm. like a bird. Yeah. Like an ostrich. Because they come from birds, don't they? Well, the birds yeah. come from the dinosaurs. Well, no, yeah. 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 So, how do crocodiles sit with their arms spread out, right? Yeah. Like, they're, they're oh, arms they're basically... Pedicate. Yeah, they're, con- they're constantly doing, like, a push-up with, with all five. things. Right. So, that is one of the primary differences. Like, anatomically, when you're looking at the difference between a dinosaur and a reptile. Mm. Now, there are some things that you'll look at from that era that are also reptiles, like the Demetrodon that has the big fin on its back. Mm. I'm getting way nerdy on all of this. But it does bother me when people say, alligators and crocodiles are basically living dinosaurs. That's like saying, this fish is a living dinosaur. It's like, no. They were around at the same time, to, to some extent. In fact, there were giant crocodiles at one point, but mm. true giants, uh, but uh, not not the same thing. I think uh, that's for the kind of, you know, the, the kind of stupid people in the audience, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're helping out the stupid people. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those, uh, for some reason, what's jumped into my mind is uh, that, that line from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where it goes, it's a date, you eat them. Right. <laughs> Which I always hate. Whenever I watch Raiders, that's the only part of Raiders of the Lost Ark I hate. 
but yeah yeah i mean i i i i enjoyed both of them you know i'm glad we saw them rogue was a total box office failure uh, but i don't know whether it still does but i read had a hundred percent on rotten tomatoes for a long time i would definitely i mean i'd give it a thumbs up it, it sets yeah. out with certain goals yeah. i feel like it never gets overly cheesy I feel like when they have drama with the characters, like the the mother who's suffering from cancer, who's like, leave me behind. It's not, it never feels melodramatic. It just feels dramatic. There's not like a teary 10 minute farewell. Yeah. Well, she said she didn't sacrifice herself somehow. Yeah. She just survives. I mean, they they get her out of there. Yeah. You spoiled it. No, but yeah, (laughs) it's true. And I think, you know, they have this kind of, all these people have different things going on like the guy you mentioned who drops his wife's ashes into the water well another lovely little thing he does is when he first gets on the ferry she goes uh, Rod, Rod and Michelle who's the, who's the lead by the way one of the leads we haven't mentioned her um, but she kind of she's the tour guide and she goes oh two tickets and he goes oh no just one yeah and I'm like because the other one was his wife who yeah. died yeah I almost feel like they let him have a backstory to his character to have him there yeah and He's like why? Actor. Why is he here? <laughs> and so he'd have some. You know, it, it's an interesting little. Well, you know, you can kind of. Yeah. Not everyone who's going to be on one of those boats is going to be there because you know they just want to see a crocodile. You know, maybe that's yeah. where he was with his wife thirty years ago, twenty yeah. years ago. Well, they planned that trip, and then something mm-hmm. happened. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. it 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 makes the conversation he has with the woman who's lost her husband then that much more meaningful. Yeah. Because he he never acknowledges that. He's lost his wife. He's just. It no. must be hard to not to not to be able to say goodbye. Yeah, and, um, he, and he has a lovely kind of like line where he's like, "Well, you know, we're not leaving you behind. You know, we're yeah. going to have to. You know, you're going to have to swim, or mm-hmm. you're going to have to put on a life jacket. You know, very touching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess so. I mean, the history of um, these films. So we mentioned three of them. I guess. I guess the daddy was alligator. From 1980. I tried to find it today. Yeah. I couldn't find where to stream it. I used to have it on DVD. You could probably still get it on DVD, but it's, it's very spotty. It kind of comes and goes, mm-hmm. I've noticed. It is good fun, though, because it's like it's um, scripted by John Sells, who scripted the original oh, Piranha. Yeah. So a, lo- a lot of witty humor, black humor in the script. Yeah. Uh, Robert Forrester um, is the lead in it. And in fact, Quentin Tarantino was such a fan they put Robert Forrester in, in Jackie Brown because um, of Alligator yeah that's excellent um, so I've never seen Alligator my only memory of it is occasionally they would show it like as a major Saturday night movie on American TV yeah and it would always be like this Saturday this Saturday don't go Alligator. down don't go down the sewer yeah <laughs> something's eating the people block up your overflow pipe <laughs> <laughs> Repair that grill. You're the apex predator. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, no, it's definitely worth. I, I used to watch it a few times, kind of as a kid and teenager. It used to be on, kind of like Saturday nights, late on one of the channels, and it was always good fun because it's kind of it's it's got Henry Silver mm-hmm. as a kind of half price Quint. Okay. Who turns up and gets killed? Henry already. Silver, really? Henry Silver. That's fantastic. Okay. It's got uh, Jean, Dean Jagger. Is, oh. the, is the shifty old baldy businessman who's been flushing too many hormones down the uh, the sink which caused all this oh man um, I've got to see this you got to see this maybe we should do a part two to this oh absolutely I'd love to do way more <laughs> crocodile movies and actually you know one I thought about the other day when you know when we were talking about this which I haven't seen for years but I wouldn't mind checking out again was uh, Lake Placid I saw that in the theater yeah I'm a fan yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. I remember at the time being a bit sniffy about it because I think it was more funny than horror. Yeah, it's how I think of the Meg. And I, yeah, I hate the Meg. <laughs> and uh, oh, didn't mention the Meg. And um, yeah, it kind of brought back Betty White because she she popped up and started calling her a big cocksucker. Right, right, the start right. of her resurgence, I think. <laughs> That's true. Bill Pullman was his usual. Nothing phases me, even yeah. a thirty foot crocodile. I think I was reminded more of Tierney might be in it too. But yeah, we'll talk about it when we do like classic. Yeah, yeah but I, I would love yeah. to do a series of movies about animals eating people because uh, totally, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I always feel like summer is the time, maybe because of Jaws. Yeah, you always got to pull Jaws out every summer, and uh, yeah, we could do the piranhas. Oh, 
And and at some point I want to do Jaws four because I've never seen it. Oh my god! Well, yeah, it's worth. I can't it. bury another Jaws. I could, yeah. uh, uh, I never thought it would be the sharks. They, <laughs> they were always our friends. But um, yeah, no, we should do Jaws Revenge. Yes, yes, that's that would be fun. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for... Uh, uh, oh, can I point out one last thing? Most absolutely. I just remembered. So I've noticed a trend. It's not a very... It's a pretty obvious trend, to be honest. To be the star of one of these films, it really helps if you're a TV actor who's got a successful series but it's just been cancelled. <laughs> because um, in Primeval, is was uh, Dominic Purcell, mm-hmm. who I think did Prison Break. Just before. Oh climbing. yeah, I know who that actor is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like big, big. He's like a kind of like, you know, he looks like Jason Stratham's brother. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, and then of course in Rogue we got Michael Vartan, who's an alias, and um, and then yeah, and then we got the the lovely young actress who I can't pronounce her name. Uh, try from, and give it your best shot. From I tried. I tried earlier. This is going to be worse again. than the first attempt. Uh, Kaya Scodelario. Excellent. Uh, from Skins. So they were all in popular shows and then did um, Killer Crocodile Alligator movies. <laughs> and then none of them led to bigger things. <laughs> so odd. So odd. <laughs> well, I'm disappointed to hear Rogue didn't have bigger box office. Um, well, actually, I can tell you that I can, I can read off the box office quick for these because um, I... For some reason, I got a bit fixated on these this morning. Uh, Crawl was made for thirteen point five million, and is heading towards forty million as we speak, and it's doing theaters. So that's a hit. That's a good hit because uh, that's before you know rent or anything else. Um, Alligator back in the day, nineteen eighty, was made for one million and made six million at the box mm. office. So very very nice return for that. Primeval, I heard the box office was fifteen million. But I don't know how much it cost. I'm thinking that probably was okay or broke even, roughly. Yeah. Um, and the big loser was actually Rogue, because Rogue was made for $25 million. What the hell did they spend that on? That went in some producers' pockets, I think. Yeah. And uh, just made about $10 million back. $25 million. $25 million, which is like twice as much as Crawl did 12 years later. Yeah. So, what do they spend that money on? Because you don't even see the uh, the crocodile to the end. <laughs> Maybe CGI is really expensive back then. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, 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 yeah, I, I would guess. I mean, I can't think Rod and Michelle cost that much. <laughs> <laughs> so, something was going on there. So, yeah. something a bit dodgy there, I think. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, one of the things I did think was this movie is a nightmare for the Australian Tourism Board. Like, while we're watching this. Is that all Australian films? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Our continent wants to kill you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, thanks so much for sticking with us as we talk to Alligator Movies. Sounds like we're going to do a few more movies where large animals eat people. And... Um, we will be back soon. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments there on the SoundCloud or at the blog, Twitter, wherever you want to talk to us. And we'll be back soon. Cheers. Bye. That about wraps it up for this edition of The Signal Watch, a production of the League of Melbotus. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed this podcast, we invite you to drop on by The Signal Watch blog, where you'll find write-ups of a wide variety of movies and more. You can drop comments on this podcast and let us know what you think. We do have a Signal Watch Patreon, and if you're so moved, we'd most certainly appreciate your support. We'll be back soon with more exceedingly high-quality content. So, 
until next time. God damn it, babies. You've got to be kind.